Hi guys, Laura here from Mama Loves Mysteries and Tea. And today I figured, just like my tea, I'd switch it up with some hot chocolate and I'd give you guys some subjects on the holiday. We're like not gonna do murders right now. <laughs> we'll do some later. Today I wanted to give you guys the top 10 weirdest, creepiest Christmas traditions. I saw a post on Facebook about this and then I had to do my own research and I came up with my own list because theirs was kind of like weird and lame and I didn't understand some of it. It wasn't weird or creepy what the article said. There was one and it's on my list. So I figured I'd share with you guys my top 10 list of weird, creepy, spooky Christmas traditions. Ready? Number 10. Dead birds. Yep, you can thank the Victorians for this one. Gosh, I love that era. They're fantastically obsessed with morbid things and death. And they gave us some pretty awesome things to dwell on, look at, and share with you guys. They used to give dead wrens actually as a symbol of good luck to the coming year. And it didn't hurt that it coincided around the hunting season either, which was December 26th. So they just kind of combined Christmas and this hunting season together and New Year's and got this give a dead bird to show you care and love the person and you want them to have a good year and give them this dead bird. It's a fantastic idea. I wouldn't mind that one not coming back. My cat uh, brings me plenty of dead things. Ah, <sighs> that's good enough for me. It's good enough for me. All right, number nine on our list, caroling. And I know you're thinking caroling. Laura, caroling is not uh, scary or creepy. You're right, it's not. But it used to be. Oh yeah, caroling was just a drunken fest of going door to door and raiding their alcohol and their food. And that doesn't sound so bad unless you're a terrible host and they feel you're a terrible host and you don't have the right crackers and cheese sat out for you know who. Definitely me. Mm -hmm. Then they get a chance to ransack and vandalize your home right before the holiday season. Fantastic. All that work and drunken Joe down the street doesn't like your sweets and he tears your shit up. That was fun, I bet. But that was really fun. <laughs> Alright, number three. Now, I'm going to look at my notes here because I'm really worried about mispronouncing this one because it is one of my favorites. I think I said number three. That's number eight. Laura, number dyslexic. What's going on there? I'm going to look at my notes. Help me out here, guys. Marie Louide. It's from Welsh, so I feel bad that I don't know this. I have Welsh in my DNA. I should know this. But I didn't know this tradition. This is quite literally the tradition of sticking a horse head that you decorate. A skull. There's a horse head. Not the live. Not with everything on it. Dripping gooey. And yuck. The skull of a horse on a stick. You decorate it. Put some googly eyes inside the eyeball socket, some fake antler heels on it, whatever you want to do, a bow or something. And you go door to door caroling rhymes to your neighbors. Again, sounds creepy, but harmless. Until you realize that uh, the caroling are more like rhymes, and if you mess it up, the horse head gets to come in your house and drink all your beer and eat all your food. And yeah, you just, you get to host this horse head for being uh, bad at riddles. I kind of love it. I really want to bring this one back because uh, I'm already weird. I don't think my neighborhood would find it all that unusual to see me caroling down the street with the horse skull decorated in glitter demanding they feed me. That's probably not, that's really not that unusual. It would just be adding the skull to it, really. I love food. Oh, yeah, I do. Number seven. Number seven I put on here, but I just don't understand, and I don't think anybody does, including the people that do it. But I love them for doing it. Goat burning in Sweden. In this little town in Sweden, back in the 70s, somebody built this giant goat in the middle of town, and overnight, it was burned down. It was so much fun that they decided to do this every year since then. And they love it. And nobody knows why. I couldn't figure out any reason why we burned this goat in Sweden. But it sounds like a good time for all friends and family. 
vandalism, folks. That's the one time of year it's okay. It's like the purge, but with your Christmas feelings, you know? Like, oh, look at that decorative Christmas goat. Well, you know what? I just feel like purging all this happy, joyous feeling and burning the piece of shit to the ground. And then you get to do it. And I bet you feel fantastic. After verbally abusing the goat and then burning it down, all your stress from the holidays just, woo, right out the door. I bet it's very liberating. That's my theory on that. All right. Number six. This one <laughs> I love. It's fantastic. It's out of Iceland. And it was a way to motivate the workers, really. Iceland knew what they were doing back in the day. So you had to have your wool done by Christmas. And if you didn't, basically this giant feral cat called the Yule Cat would come and eat you. Come and eat your naked cold butt because you didn't finish the job. That's what you get for being a lazy worker. You get eaten by a giant Yule Cat. So that's fun. <laughs> Frankly, I love it. And I love all the pictures of the giant cat running through the neighborhoods, <laughs> eating everybody. <laughs> It makes my day! Oh, the old cat. That's fantastic. <laughs> Alright, this one isn't quite as scary as the old cat. It's the Christmas spider. And I only put it in here because some of y'all are really, really scared of spiders. And I just don't know why because you you're bigger than them. You understand that? You can step on them. Anyways, the Christmas spider, the story I heard, was that a family poor brought in a Christmas tree to brighten up their lives around the Christmas holiday spirit. Well, when the spiders came out and realized they were dragging, you know, all the, they were messing up the Christmas decorations and whatnot, they felt really bad and noticed that the family was poor. So they took their beautiful threads, wound it around the tree in all its glistening beauty for the family to wake up to in the morning. It's beautiful. The Christmas spider. I have my own. See, I, put, I made that. That's my Christmas spider. And funny story, to add on to this, this is where we get tinsel from. Oh yeah, all you arachnophobiacs out there, tinsel is apparently from the Christmas spider. Doesn't look so sparkly and fun now, does it? I'm so sorry. I just, I don't, I don't understand the spider hate. I don't. It's just not cool. All right, on to number four. Now I put this guy at number four because everybody knows who he is. You know what? Can you guess? You know where I'm going with it yet? I bet you do. Krampus. Krampus out of Germany. Everybody knows Krampus now. It's not unusual. He's uh, pretty darn cool. I love the Krampus parades and all the Krampus little festivals that are popping up now because it's like a little bit of Halloween around the Christmas time. I love that. Krampus, if you're a bad child, will kidnap you and eat you. And that's that. You get eaten if you're bad. You don't get no toys. You get to be an entree. That's it. <laughs> I love Krampus, though. There's more to the Krampus legend, but I'm sure we all know it by now. That's why I kind of gave you like my own little short, smart-ass version. But along with Krampus out of Italy, we also get the Christmas witch, whom starts off pretty nice. She's a sweet lady if you're a good kid. If you're a bad kid, <laughs> she kidnaps you, guts you, and feeds you to her husband. So, yeah. All sweet and innocent until you, uh, you're bad that year, Timmy. And then you become again. Someone else's entree. I love it. It's all these cannibalism going on at Christmas. I don't, I don't get it. All right, anyways. Number two in my long list here is the 12 days of a goblin. Yep, 12 days. This goblin comes out from underground and fucks all your Christmas holiday plans up. Yeah, it does. Peas in your pudding. I don't know where the Christmas goblin comes from, but I want to buy a Christmas goblin and put him next to my Christmas tree, along with a miniature Yule cat. I want this. I might make it myself. I need these in my life. Yes, I do. All right. Number one on my list of top 10 weird and creepy and unusual and scary things for Christmas traditions is out of a Alice France, Alice France. If I'm mispronouncing that, I apologize. I'm terrible with names. And it is literally the Christmas cannibal scarecrow. To this day, still scaring children. I, I love it. 
It sounds horrible, but I love it. One, I love it the fact that it's, they're still scaring children with this. And it's the Christmas cannibal. <laughs> what? Basically, a rich man in town became too greedy and obsessed with the devil and Satan worshiping, etc., etc., etc. The town kicked him out. And he just decided, well, you know what? I'm going to come, get your bad children, eat them, take them off your hands for you, and we'll call it even. And the town was like, well, we're not really okay with that, but can we stop you? You're a cannibal eating scarecrow now, so guess not. <laughs> so there you go. The Christmas cannibal, scarecrow out of France. I love it. Oh. I don't know if you guys noticed I didn't put any there for America other than maybe, I mean, we didn't start Carolee, that started overseas, so we didn't can't take credit for that. I think the only Christmas tradition we have is, uh, is sitting on some strange guy's lap, I guess, in the mall every year, because it's still a strange man, even if he's dressed like Santa Claus, so that's something to think about. That one bothered me when I read that one, it really did ruining Christmas with that thought. But anyways, that's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. Happy holidays. If you're watching this in June, this is indeed hot chocolate. It's delicious. <laughs> Alright, guys. Thanks for watching.